In this video, I'll build a complete dropshipping store structured in the same way as my main dropshipping stores, like this one for example, which I'm currently making over 20,000 euros per day, as you can see over here. And let me just refresh the page for you so you know that the stats are legit. There you go. So many of you know that I've been dropshipping for years and would like to know how I build and structure my dropshipping stores in a way that they are optimized for conversions. And in today's video, I'll go over each and every step you need to take in order to build a dropshipping store. Now, this video will be split up in different stages. I will start with creating the brand identity of the store, then do the store setup, page creation, store settings, theme configuration, and lastly, apps. And each stage will be split up into multiple steps. Now, that is all you need to do in order to create an exceptional dropshipping store. So, let's not waste any more time and dive in. Now, before I start building the actual store, I want to mention that if you don't already have a product to sell, then you're not ready to watch this video. I would advise you to first go out there, find the product, and then come back to this video. In fact, I've already uploaded a video on how you can find winning dropshipping products for free on my YouTube channel. The video is called Ultimate Dropshipping Product Research Method. Trust me, you will not regret watching it. Anyway, back to the point. So after you find the product that you want to start selling, it's time to build the store. Now regarding the store building stage, there are three different types of stores that you can create. A general store, a one product store, and a niche store. A general store is a store with many different products, which is great if you want to test multiple products at the same time. A one product store consists of only one product. A niche store consists of products around one specific product category. For example, pet or kitchen products. For me personally, I always build one product stores because the conversion rate on a one product store is typically higher than the other types. Let me show you a short example of what I mean. Imagine you are looking to buy a lamp and you come across these two e-commerce stores. One of them has the actual product name as the store name and the other has a generic and a random store name. And they're also selling a bunch of other products. You are more likely to purchase from the store that has the actual product name because it looks more trustworthy and serious compared to a store that is selling products of all kinds. Now, there are of course many, many reasons to why one product stores are better than the other types. But this was a short example and I hope you get the point. However, it's up to you to choose what store type you want to go with. And for this video, I will build a one product store. The product that I will build a store around is the snake and shoulder massager. I found it in joshua.io and I saw that it's getting a lot of sales, which proves to me that people are in need of this product. It's basically a heated neck and shoulder massager that relieves pain. For the domain part, you can find the domain by going to leandomainsearch.com, write a keyword, it can be about your product, and it will show you all the available .com domain names that have the keyword. I always find domain names by using this website. And for my store, I'll go with the domain name sleekmassager.com, which I found earlier on this website. It matches the product I'm selling and this domain is very easy to remember. So now that you know what store type I will go with and what product I will build the store around, we are ready to start with stage number one, brand identity. So firstly, we need to lay out the branding for the store right, meaning that we need to first find a domain for the store, then create a website logo and the favicon. This is a very important step and this is the first step for the store building stage. Now that you have found the domain name for the store, the next step is buying and securing the domain name because this is where you'll be sending all your traffic. I recommend that you buy it through Namecheap. I have noticed that Namecheap offers better domain prices than for example GoDaddy. Just buy it for one year, it will not cost you more than $10. Now the next step for the brand identity stage is creating a logo. Now, I will not go ahead and create a logo in this video because it will just be too long. But you can use canva.com to create a logo. Just make sure that the logo you create looks cool, appealing, and trustworthy. Just do not create a logo that has way too many colors and is bright. I made a logo for this store with canva.com and I added an icon to the left side of the logo which I found on a website called Flaticon. I always go with this style for my logos an icon to the left and the store name to the right. 
However, if you have a little bit of money to spare, you can pay someone on Fiverr.com to create a logo for you, but it's not really needed. This will take you max 30 minutes to do yourself. But if you want to go with this route, just make sure that you don't pay anything more than $25. So now that you have a domain name secured and the logo created, the brand identity stage is done. Let's move to the next stage and that is store setup. Now for the store setup stage, this is where you will start setting up the actual store. But before we do that, let's just do a quick recap. Now you know what product you want to sell, you have the domain and the logo. It's time to start setting up the store. And for the store setup, almost all dropshippers use Shopify to set up the store. But the downside is that it can cost you a little bit of money since they have recently raised their prices. However, I've managed to grab an affiliate link with Shopify that allows you to set up a store and start selling for only $1 a month for 3 months instead of paying the regular price which is $39 a month. You can use that link to claim the offer. I have linked it in the description down below. And just for clarification, since this is an affiliate link, I'll be making money when you sign up. But honestly, if you're going to start dropshipping, Shopify is the best platform out there. Anyway, once you're in Shopify, just enter your email address and press start free trial. Here you'll be prompted to answer a few questions but just press skip all since the questions you answer are mainly used for the Shopify team to understand who is coming into the platform. Next, they will ask you where your business is located, so make sure your country is selected and press next. Great, now the Shopify store has been set up. Now I know at this point, you might be overwhelmed with everything you are seeing in front of you, but don't worry, I'll go over everything in the upcoming stages. But to finish off the store setup stage, I will need to upload the product I'm going to sell to the store. Before we do that, we need to change the store currency to USD, because you'll be selling your products in USD since this is the most popular and used currency in the world. Just go to settings and over here in the store currency section, scroll up and change it to USD and click on save. You will understand why I did this later on. Now let's go back to uploading the product. To upload the product you will sell to your store, simply head over to products and press add your product. But this approach will take a lot of time because you will need to find images of your product, find a good title, product description and so on. What I like to do is head over to joshua.io, then go to the competitor research tool. Here I will enter my product name in the include title keywords input and then press search. This will show me all the stores on Shopify that are selling the exact same product that I will also sell. Then I just go around for a little bit and go to their websites to see who has the best product title, product images, and product description that I can take inspiration from. So I will search for some products now and get back to you when I find something that's good. Okay, so this store has uploaded the product that I'm also going to sell, and they have clearly put effort into the details of the product page. So I will go back to Dropship and press this import icon to connect my Shopify store that I just created to Dropship. That way I can import this product. I will just enter my store name here on this input which you can find over here at the top of the URL if you go back to Shopify. And then press the connect button. Dropship will now redirect me to the Shopify page and here I will just read through everything and press on the install app button. Then go back to Dropship and import the product to my store. Great, so I have now imported the product to the store. And as you can see, Dropship imported all the product details from the competitor to my store. But I still have to change some things here, like the product title and the description, because I can get in trouble if I copy everything from that competitor. However, the product images, I do not need to change them because they are most likely from AliExpress. It is just that this competitor did all the dirty work for me. Now since this is a one product store, I like to make the product title branded. So I'll enter the store name Sleek Massager first, add a dash, and then have the name of the actual product after it. Next, for the product description, I like to keep it short, sweet, and simple. And you should too. Don't put too much text, but instead use GIFs to explain the product with a little bit of text. Because remember, people are too lazy nowadays. They will not bother reading a page full of text, so use GIFs to explain instead. The way I find GIFs is by searching for my product on Google, then press on Tools, press Type, and select the GIF option. And whenever you find a GIF that you like, just right click it, 
copy it, and then head over to Shopify and paste it in the description field. And for the text, you can write your own or change a few words from your competitor, or use AI tools like ChatGPT or Google Bard to get ideas of what to write. So now I will just go ahead and speed this process up of me doing the product description. Great, I'm now done with the product description as you can see over here. I kept it short and used a few GIFs that explains the product and at the bottom, I put what will come in their package and you can find that information when you search for your product in AliExpress, along with some information like what payment methods my store has and etc. You should copy this exact structure that I go with as I use it on all my other dropshipping stores. Next up is the images. So since we already have the images, we're all good here. You can rearrange them if you want to. In the price section over here, we need to set a price for the product. I usually price the product two and a half times or three times more than what I get the product for. This neck and shoulder massager product cost me around $55 to source. So I will price this product at $119.99, which is also the amount my competitors are selling this product for. So I'm just matching their prices. Then I like to double the price and make it look like it's 50% off. After you're done, go up here to status, select active and press save. Then in publishing, go to the three dots button, press match sales channels and make sure that the sales channel online store is selected as well. Otherwise your product will not be visible in your store. All right, so now with the store setup stage, we have created the store, changed the store currency and uploaded the product to the store which is all you need to do in this stage and this brings me to the next stage which is page creation now the page creation stage is very very important because this will allow your visitors to navigate through your website if we look at fashion nova for example and scroll down to the bottom you can see that they have pages here in the footer they have an about us page track order page contact, refund policy, and so on. If we go to the shipping info page, we're able to see their shipping times. So this is what we'll be doing in this stage, because there will always be visitors that want to know more about your store and information about it before they place an order. So to save you time and headache, I'll be providing you with all the pages your store needs. That way you do not need to worry about writing your own text and instead just set this up very, very fast. I have linked all the pages in the description down below. And this is everything that I use. So after you click the link in the description, you'll be redirected to a Google Drive folder, which consists of two folders, a general folder and a policy folder. If you go to the policy folder, I've provided you with the privacy policy text, refund policy without refunds, and refund policy with refunds, and lastly, a terms of service. Inside, for example, terms of service, you can copy this text and paste it when you're creating your pages. Now let's go back and see another page example. In the general folder, when you condone business and e-commerce, you will always have to have a shipping information page, about us page, contact page, frequently asked questions, payment methods, and track your order page. I've also included some other pages like a shoe size chart or a size guide tutorial if you would ever need to use this for a clothing store. The only thing you will need to do is go to these pages, for example, frequently asked questions, and press Ctrl F if you're on Windows or Command F if you're on Mac. So now just search website. And for every time you see the word website with the letter W in capital, it means that here you should input your store name. So in this case, I'll put Sleek Massager. Just do this on all the pages you will paste. And then if you find the word website without the letter W in capital, just ignore it. Anyway, to set the pages up, I'll begin with the shipping information page. I will simply just copy this text, then go to Shopify, online store, pages, press add page, give this page the title shipping information and paste the text that I just copied. That's it. This is all you have to do for all of the pages. I'll speed this process up now and get back to you once I'm done copying and pasting all the pages. Alright, I'm now done setting all the pages up. Let's go ahead and create a navigation. Now you might wonder, what is navigation? So if I go to this random dropshipping store, their navigation is up here in the header. They have home, shop now, track order, and contact. And if I scroll down, they have their policy pages here at the bottom. So this is navigation. But in order for people to see the pages that you have created, you will need to set up the navigation for your store. 
in Shopify, go to navigation. Here we have main menu and footer menu. Main menu is the header. Footer is the footer at the bottom. So let's go ahead and go to main menu and I will show you how it's done. We currently have home, catalog and contact. But we do not want to have it like this because catalog does not make any sense since this is a one product store. We only have one product in the store. So I will go ahead and press edit and change the name of this to shop now and change the redirect link to this product, the product that I already uploaded in the earlier stage. Once done, press add. I'll also add the about us page, track order and contact. So now I'm done configuring the navigation for the header. I'll speed this process up and do the rest of the navigation for the store. Great, we're almost done now. So first we have the main menu, which is the header. We also have disclosures, other and quick links. You will see me put these menus in the actual store later on in the video. Now the last thing I need to do is go down here to the preferences tab and give my website a title and a short description about the store so that it can rank higher on Google when somebody searches for it. After you've set this up, everything is done now. Now that was all you needed to do for the page creation stage. If you followed my steps correctly, your website should be very easy to navigate through. Now let's move to the next stage and this is the last stage you will need to go through before you can start customizing the actual look of the store. And that is store settings. Now for the store settings stage, this one will be quite short. But basically what we'll be doing is setting up the payment processor so we can start accepting payments from customers, configure the checkout settings, the shipping options, and connect the actual domain to the store. I'll go over all the settings and let you know what you should do. To do the store settings stage, go back to Shopify and press on the settings down here on the bottom left. Here I'll go through all the tabs on the left side and let you know what you should adjust and not adjust. Let's begin with store details. So since we've already changed the store currency to USD, there's nothing left to adjust here other than the store name up here. Just press edit and change it to your store name. Mine is, of course, Sleek Massager, so I'll go ahead and change it to that and press save. Next, we have plans, billing, and users and permissions. There is nothing to adjust here, but payments is where we will go next. This is where you'll need to connect the payment processor so that you can accept payments from customers at checkout. I recommend that you go with Stripe, but you can use Shopify payments too. Just press choose a provider and follow the instructions to connect the payment processor. After you're done, let's move to the checkout tab. Here we will adjust the settings for the checkout page in a way so that you can collect as much data as possible about your customers, which you can then use to retarget them in case they leave your checkout without purchasing, and also for your supplier to be able to fulfill your orders without having any issues with missing customer details. At the top, in the customer contact method section, select the email option. Secondly, in the customer information section, select require first and last name and required on the shipping address phone number. Next, in the marketing option section, select pre-selected for email. And for the rest of the sections, just leave them as they are. So we are now done with the checkout tab. Under it, we have shipping and delivery. So let's go to it. This is where you'll be able to adjust your shipping options so that your customers are able to select the shipping method at checkout. But before we can play with this, we need to go to markets and set up the regions to where you can ship and to what countries you will show the shipping methods. Over here in the overview section, press on the international market and go to edit and add countries and regions. Here you can select specific countries or regions. If you're selling in specific markets, for example, only in Europe, then just select that. But I'll go ahead and select every region out there because I'm selling to all countries. Press save and go back to shipping and delivery. Over here in the general shipping rates, press on it, then go to the three dots button and press edit zone. All you have to do here is just deselect and select the international checkbox and you're good to go. You're now ready to set up the shipping options. For all my dropshipping stores, I like to provide customers with three shipping options. A free shipping option, a paid shipping and a paid insured shipping option. To set this up, simply delete the standard shipping option that you already have then press add rate, give it the name worldwide shipping and leave the price at zero dollars and press done. Now let's set up the second shipping option. 
Give it the name Express Shipping and price it at $4.86 for example. Don't make the numbers even like 99 cents. Make it random. It will look more logical to the customer. Lastly, for the third option, give it the name Express Insured Shipping, price it at $6.91 and press Done. With these three shipping options, you are giving customers the freedom to select between free, express, or express and insured shipping. Of course, this will add extra money to your pocket by implementing this, but make sure you speak with your supplier about this, so that in case you get any orders with these shipping options, your supplier is able to fulfill it. Now before we finish this off, make sure you do the exact thing with the domestic section here at the top. Just copy what you did earlier. Great, now that this is all set up, if I go to the checkout page, I'm able to see all the shipping options, which leads us to the next tab, which is taxes and duties. But for this one, we will ignore it because we will not charge any taxes along with locations, gift cards, apps, and sales channels. There is just no reason for us to touch these. But the domain tab is where we will go next, because here we need to connect the domain sleekmassager.com that I bought to the store so that people can access the store through this domain. Over here, just press connect the existing domain, write your domain name and follow the instructions on screen to connect your domain. It's pretty simple. After you've connected your domain to your store, we can move to the last tab, which is policies. The rest of the other tabs you see here, we will not adjust anything on because it's not needed. So for the policies, if I go to for example Gymshark's checkout, at the bottom they have put the refund policy, privacy policy and terms of service in checkout because sometimes customers want to read the refund policy for example before they place an order. So to do this, just go back to your online store, then pages and find the legal pages that you created in the page creation stage. Copy each text and paste it in the policy section. I will speed this up. After you're done, just press save and you're good to go. Great. Now that you have a store settings all set up, we are ready to start customizing the theme of the store. Before we do that, let's just do a quick recap. We have created the store, uploaded the product to the store, created all the pages and navigation for the store, and now we have adjusted the store settings, which means we are ready for the next stage, and that is theme configuration. Now, the theme configuration stage is where you will spend the most amount of time, because you need to make sure that your store looks good, trustworthy and optimized for conversions and all the work that we did earlier will come to light at this stage. So let's begin. Over here in online store, make sure to be in the themes tab. Then scroll down and add the sense theme. This theme layout is free and is the one that I personally use in my stores. Of course, there are ones out there that are free and paid, but I found that this is the best one out there. Anyway, after you've added it, press the publish button and finish publishing it. Then, down here, press the three dots button and remove the old default theme because you will not be using it anymore. Now, let's go ahead and customize the theme because as you can see, the colors are off and everything you're seeing here are just the default settings. But before we customize anything, we need to first head over to theme settings tab and adjust all the theme settings so we can lay out the foundation. Now you might be overwhelmed over the amount of tabs there are here, but we will only adjust a few tabs. Let's go to the first and obvious one, the logo tab. I will just upload the logo and the favicon that we created earlier in this tab. Great, now that I've uploaded the logos, we can move to the colors tab. Here I will change the colors of the whole store because the current colors look a bit childish to me. So to do that, press add scheme. For the background, I'll make it completely white since this is the standard color used for all the websites out there. And since my store will be selling a product that is more on the higher ticket side, I'll use the color black for the buttons since this will make it look more exclusive and premium, and the color white for the button label of course. But if you're selling a product that is more on the cheap side, you can also use black, otherwise go with dark blue. Anyway, you might have noticed that the color changes I made have not done anything yet. This is because Shopify has recently introduced the color schemes feature, which basically means that you need to go to each section of your store later and update the color to the color schemes group you made, as you can see over here. But I will do this later. Also, make sure to put the exact colors you put in color scheme 1 as well. You will understand why we do this later. 
After you're done adjusting the colors to your own liking, let's move to the social media tab, which is where you will need to link your social media accounts to the store. This one is not that important, but if you have created social media profiles for your store, you can just link them here and they will show in the footer. I've personally not created the social media profiles yet, so I will just skip this. Now the last thing we will configure is the checkout tab. Over here, just upload your store logo so that customers can see your logo at checkout and position it in the center. Then scroll down to the colors and here make sure you pick the colors that match the ones you've adjusted earlier. In my case, it will be all black. So I will change the accents and the buttons to black. Great, we're now done adjusting the theme settings. We can now move to customizing the actual theme. Let's begin with the announcement bar over here. Just change the color scheme of it and write free worldwide shipping. Next, go to header, change the desktop logo position to middle left. Then change the sticky header option to always and the color schemes. After you're done doing that, go up here to the top and make sure that this is selected on main menu so that you're displaying the right links. After you're done adjusting the header, you're ready to design the homepage. For the homepage, we will just keep it simple. Here at the top, I will just add an image of the product along with some text and below it some information about the product and a call to action at the end. I'll go ahead and speed this process up for you because this does not require much explaining. Alright, so now I'm done customizing the homepage, and as you can see, I kept it short, sweet, and simple. I used images of the product and added some icons that I found from Flat Icon, with some bullet points to give this a more premium feel. And at the bottom, I added the product as a call to action and a newsletter section in case anyone wants to opt in for newsletters. Now, before we move to the product page, which will be the final page we will design, we need to fix the footer because it's currently a mess. Just go down here press footer, add text, and three menu blocks. In the text field, I like to write our mission and just some text about the goal for the store. Then for the three menu blocks, I will just go ahead and connect all the navigation menus that we created earlier in the page creation stage. Okay, so now that this is all set up, the home page is done. And as you can see, this looks very, very clean. You can just copy this whole structure or maybe if you have any new ideas, you can implement them too but it's not really needed. Now let's move to the product page which will finalize the theme configuration stage once we are done designing it. I'll firstly begin by changing the color scheme of the whole page. Then select this text and remove it because it's just unnecessary to have. Afterwards, down here press add block and add two collapsible rows. The first row, name it shipping and change the icon to the truck icon. Over here, we want to display to the customer how long your shipping time is, so you can just copy this text that I wrote. And for the row below, name it refunds and select the return icon. Here, just say the refund policy in short. The refund policy for my store is 14 days money back guarantee after the purchase, so I will just state it down here. Just make sure not to make this too long because you need to understand that the people that come to your website want to know things fast and not read too much text. Now we are completely done with the theme configuration part. The last thing we will do is head up here, press exit, go to the preferences tab in online store and remove the password from your store so that your store will be accessible to everyone now. Now if I go to our eye icon here, you can see the whole store. It is very well structured and set up. Alright, there you have it. So this is the proper way to build a dropshipping store. I always design my stores to make them look like an actual brand and not like a dropshipping store. And most of my stores are designed this way, so you should follow this design for your own stores because it has been proven to work for me many many times. But we are not done yet. If we go to the product page, we can see that there are no reviews on this product and the store currency is only in USD. You need to keep in mind that people from around the world will enter your website and you need to show their country currency. And this will build more trust along with reviews for social proof, which brings us to the last and final stage, 
and that is apps so for the app stage this is the stage that will finalize your dropshipping store completely and is the easiest stage now for this stage we will install a few apps we will begin with best currency converter and a reviews now these apps are budget friendly which is all you need to complete your dropshipping store and start selling now let's dive into my laptop and i'll walk you through this once you're in shopify go up here to the search bar search for best currency converter and go to the shopify app store in here try looking for the exact app over here and install it to your store this is the app that will enable you to show multiple currencies automatically in your store so after the app has been installed just follow the instructions they show you to activate the app in your store i will speed up the process of me doing this Great, the app is now activated and if I go to the product page of my store, it is showing me the currency AAD which is the currency of the country I am in and not only USD. By implementing this app, your conversion rate will increase. Now for the last app, we need reviews to the product page. This will add more social proof and make it more convincing for people to buy the product. Without any reviews, your product page will look very sketchy. Now to do this, go back to Shopify App Store and install the app A Reviews. After it has been installed, you can just skip the tour. After that, go to your profile and head over to plans. Here we need to upgrade the plan because what this app does is that you will provide it with a link of a product from for example AliExpress, Amazon, eBay, Shane or Etsy and it will take all the reviews from that product page and put it in your product page. So basically, you do not have to do any manual work. This is all automated. Anyway, after you've upgraded your plan, go up here in the reviews tab. Select it and press on import reviews. What you want to do now is go to Amazon, search for the product that you're going to sell and find one or multiple products from other sellers that have good reviews. After you've found the product, Copy the link, go back to A Reviews, paste it here and click on Import. Check all the details and press Submit. Now if I go to the product page and scroll down, as you can see here, all the reviews has been imported. This is everything you need to do. Alright, that was it for the store building video. This video has been highly requested and I hope I was able to give you a clear understanding of how to do it the right way. If you followed all the steps, you should be good to start selling. Also, if you have any questions or you would like to see any other dropshipping videos, please let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video useful, make sure to give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more valuable content. Take care for now.